as well, trying to be that hyper carry for the team. But we are, of course, into champion select, ladies and gentlemen. And Jiayang, he's not going to have that Azir. Of course, played it in both of the games against Snake, and he's going to have to mix it up now. No, they've done their research straight away, taking the Azir with no hesitation, banned yep. it away from him. And the response is the Hecarim. Yeah, carry, not going to have that one, of course. Nara and Hecarim were sort of Carrie's staple champions there in the top lane, so not going to be on the horse. And Hart, a lot of respect already. The Alistar being taken off the board. Yeah, got to get rid of that Alistar. Loves the tanky champions, I believe. Alistar and Nautilus were the two that he played yesterday, so at least alleviating one of the options there for the bot lane. Yeah, and we saw Alistar really come into popularity in MSI as well. Wolf picking that one up quite a few times, and of course, uh, sort of later on in the competition, it was Mako picking that one up as well, as far as our two sort of top teams from MSI are concerned. Cassiopeia are going to hit the bench here. Hatong not going to grab that champion. And it's interesting because they didn't quite find a victory on there, but Beachy Gaming not going to be seeing it this time around. They're waiting for their final ban. Let's see what does come through here because there are still a lot of glaring champions still available. The likes of Rek'Sai and Gragas from the jungle are going to be the options. And Callista as well is an opportunity here for either of these teams. It is going to be both of those removed, of course, Callista and Urgot being sort of the high priority picks there in the bottom lane, but it leaves the jungle untouched, Rusty. It leaves the jungle completely untouched, and Rek'Sai does seem to be the number one priority for most drafts, up until the Maokai as well in the top lane, probably the number yeah. one priority for that lane. Greg is still readily available, and I do like the Cassiopeia ban. Getting rid of it because Azir seems to be the only pick into the Cassiopeia as of ah, late. Ah, interesting. Now that it's gone, you may as well respond with the Cassiopeia. And mid lane is completely open to interpretation now as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. Long looking to pick up Sivir again for Scatch. And Xiao Yang would be surprised if the mid lane was picked up now, but. You've got the jungle option available. I don't see why you would go for a mid unless it's to take it away from Hatong. He plays a lot of champions, very long-range control style, so you can just opt into your jungle pick now. Gragas or Rek'Sai, both very good at the moment. Yeah, Gragas, Rek'Sai, you've got Nunu there as well, though. There's a lot of different options, but Hart was thinking for a second, taking away Janna from Marta there, but Dandy looking to go straight back to the Nunu. Of course, didn't find success on it yesterday, but may not have necessarily been because of Dandy's play. He has, of course, been in the past a fantastic Nunu player. And if you're going to think about having control of a jungle, especially the enemy jungle, being on Nunu is going to be the way to do that. So look, we'll see how it works this time around if they do decide to go with it. Now hovering the Rek'Sai and a little bit more early game power. We'll see how things shake out. Yeah, I'm not sure which one is going to go. The Nunu not working out too well for him yesterday. And funnily enough, against the Gragas where it didn't work out so well. Looks like he's going to go for the Rek'Sai here instead. A very smart pickup, able to be everywhere on the map and will suit Dandy absolutely perfectly for vision control and ganking. Yeah, and Hatong, he may have been watching some Invictus gaming games yesterday because Rookie just putting on an absolute clinic on the Orianna and Hatong now going to do his best impersonation of that. But with carry there on the Maokai, some fantastic synergy as far as ball carrying is concerned. And Rek'Sai is no slouch in that department either. We'll see exactly what happens here. And Unlimited potential thinking about the Nar and possibly a Morgana here. I'm not sure whether that Morgana is going to be heading into the mid lane or the bottom lane. We saw it a lot in the mid yesterday, but we shall see. Of course, Morgana support still a thing. Morgana support definitely still a thing. The black shield always going to be prevalent, and we've seen a lot of Morgana mids picked into more burst style mid laners. Yeah, so true. having the Orianna available, not necessarily known for the burst capabilities, going to go for the Thresh instead. Yeah, Thresh, Thresh going to be locked in there. <coughs> Of course, my face not working anymore because, of course, Thresh is just such a weird pick that in my uh, my whole system just decides to reject it completely. Endless now considering the Lucian there as the Morgana is going to be picked up by Marta. And that'd be an interesting one. Now hovering a Bard, much more standard pick there in the bottom. I line. really want the Bard to oh, come Oh, so out. do I. And so many people have been practicing the Bard. Bard has been seen a whole lot more sort of opportunity to be played. And I'm... Actually quite surprised that we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I don't think we've seen it even banned or picked once yeah. just yet. It does enable a lot of work around the map, and Marta would have loved it. Absolutely perfect to his playstyle, roaming around, doing his thing and making plays. Bard is perfect for that, and you never really know where he's going to be at any time because he's going to get those chimes in weird, obscure places yeah, where exactly. he can also decide to gank from. They're opting for the Morgana instead. They're going to get that control bot lane where they've got the Lucian who can harass, Black Shield, stop any of the Thresh poking. They're going to be quite comfortable in that bot lane, really. Yeah, Xiaoyang 
thinking about what he wants to bring there into the mid lane. Was considering a Cogmore for a moment for some long range poke, but it is looking to be the Cassidy that he's going to opt into here. We've seen Cassidy's have decent times in a lot of these lanes, but how is he going to fare against an Orianna? You're always going to get poked out against the Orianna, and you don't look at Orianna and say she has a lot of lane pressure. She's even hovering that cleanse, so it's not that she has a lot of kill pressure. But she's got that extra auto attack damage with every attack and it even yeah. ramps up with consecutive auto attacks. And in this matchup, Cassidy has a very rough time and he just looks to scale through, get some levels and have some relevance either roaming or until he scales with an extra item where he can trade in a 1v1 fight. Yeah, and of course that uh, Null Sphere being fantastic as far as negating a fair bit of that extra magic damage is concerned, but with the amount of consistent damage that's going to be coming out of an Orianna, he may struggle, especially in the early levels, but a lot of the Kassadin players here in the LPL really able to deal with that early laning phase that can be a problem. Pretty standard top lane here as Maokai is going to enter that one against Dinar, and Dandy going to be picking up his Rek'Sai that he's seen a lot of power on against Amy's Gragas, Hatong, Two scaling mid laners here, but we'll see exactly how the Kassadin is going to fare as Endless heads up against the Sivir here in the hands of Sketch. And we've seen so many strong Sivirs yesterday. In oh, even. yeah. All of them managing to get fed through laning phase. Smart 1v2 rotations and just clever rotational play from all of the sides. We'll see how it goes here on Unlimited Potential, but hopefully their name lives up to it. Yeah, well, they're going to need a fair bit of potential here against what was sort of their big brother side here in Vici Gaming. And with the likes of Dandy and Mata, they are looking fantastic. People were saying that Vasily, arguably sort of the weak link to this team, and now with Endless on the side, maybe be able to sort of get a little bit of a better performance. But we'll see how it all works out as we hop onto the Rift, because, of course, we're not going to know until we see these sides face off against each other. Yeah, exactly. And people say that Vasily may have been the weak link, but it's also you have to keep in mind that they adjusted their play styles to work around Vasily. So maybe it'll take a bit of time for them to adjust. But we'll see how they actually go in that. Yeah, well, we'll see most definitely as we hop onto the Rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Game one, Vici Gaming taking on unlimited potential. As we do have UP actually sitting around here. Beautiful ward. Man, it's always great to see that one coming through. First game of the day as well. Carrie's got his iron. Fantastically hard ward to do. I was oh, so yeah. impressed that he pulled that one off and they're not going to be able to do anything. They've been completely spotted here on limited potential, but they are looking to be bullies. They're looking to get into the jungle of Vici Gaming and control what happens at the level one. Yeah, it's uh, Amy actually trying to get some deep vision down there. Is able to get that ward between the two mid lane outer turrets. So not exactly sort of the lane swap scouting wards here available for Unlimited Potential. Weren't quite able to get deep enough there, but they do have a lot of deep vision around the Gromp and, of course, the mid lane. Yeah, neither side really having a need to do a lane swap at the moment. There's no hyper carry vein that wants to ramp up in a, in a okay. lane where they'll get solo experience. They're quite content with the 2v2. And I guess the interesting thing to note here is that Maokai is still going to be doing the jungle with the Rek'Sai, perhaps on the assumption that there is a lane swap coming out against them. Yeah, or maybe just wants to help out here. Of course, Maokai often likes to take a camp early on and then just teleport into that top side of the map. But it's interesting, really trying to get Dandy ahead early on. And maybe he wants to be entering the enemy jungle, make sure that he can get Amy behind very early on. They're doing two camps together as well. So it's a very prolonged stay in the jungle, 2v2. Is not a whole lot's going to come from it. Nas doing his jungle camp. He's going to recall, and their timing should still be very similar in the top lane. Yeah, and cute little Chroma here as well. Sketch is going to take a fair bit of damage from the puddle and of course Endless's harass. But Siva, not going to worry about it too much, just wants to shove out this wave over and over again. You can see level 2 now hit by Marta and Endless. That Dark Binding is going to be available and might see Morgana trying to get some things to happen here on the bottom side. But as far as a 2v2 is concerned, how's this one supposed to work out here? for Vici versus Unlimited Potential. As the hook does actually land here, there's the Relentless Pursuit in as Endless does not quite find the piercing light, but it is going to mean that Marta loses most of his health bar, but nothing else going to come of it. Well, you just saw the perfect example of how this 2v2 matchup actually goes. They're very able to kill a particular person if the death sentence lands, but the Lucian can always respond and just turn it back as 
Amy might even be looking for very early level 2 gank here. Yeah, he's looking for something. And it's actually okay. going to be a ward to be put down for Amada. He might take a fair bit of damage here, but no. Nope. Amy decides not to do anything. And that was fantastic sixth sense there from the Vici Gaming bottom lane. Definitely an amazing sixth sense. They, he might have been spotted from the early ward placed in the side bush. He went into the dragon pit though, so it was just dandy with the amazing awareness to say that that's where he is and continuing to spot him as we're looking at now. Yeah, tunnels actually coming through here as dandy able to know exactly what this Gragas is do doing using that tremor sense. But Scuttlecrab was taken by unlimited potential. So they're going to have vision of that river forever. And this is really smart. Oh, like Endless Dandy. might be in wow. trouble. My goodness, if that passive shot had have come out, come out from Endless there, he may have actually been able to get that kill. But of course, with heal still available, didn't want to extend too far. And this is the troubles of the 1v1 if they leave the lane as they were. And this really expresses to the point I was about to make of Dandy with the pressure that he's consistently placing in the jungle of unlimited potential. Stealing away that blue buff, forcing Amy to go somewhere else and get some jungle yeah. camps. The Cassidan has to rotate, and Cassidan does not want to lose experience. The bot lane, the Thresh rotated, and there's a gank in the middle. Yeah, Dandy actually does have the ball on him here as well. Jiayang down to about 300 health as Hatong able to add some extra damage to that one. But Dandy so far may not have necessarily looked like he's ganking any lanes, putting pressure on that way, but noticing the fact that Amy was down there for the level two gank said, okay, well, I'm going to take away your jungle, making sure that they capitalize from every slight misplay to come through from unlimited potential. And this is what we expect from Dandy. Exactly. One aggressive position. They spot him out. Gragas not getting a successful gank and instead completely punished for the next five minutes as we've seen the jungle be invaded. Mid lane pressure placed down. That's all you need to do. Get some pressure onto a Cassidy. Maybe he'll start to either bring the Gragas mid to respond to that or he'll just start to lose a lot of health because the Orianna can freely auto attack him. It's starting to work. Not massive amounts of kill pressure, but it's still very relevant pressure across the board here from Dandy and so smart. Yeah, and sending Amy to the mid lane there with Zhang as well didn't net them anything whatsoever. It was Hatong able just to chill towards his turret, but not even let the minions crash in there. So no pressure added to the mid, even with two people. Yeah, and he was confident enough to continue to farm, managing to freeze it. Perfectly done from him. And everything right now at this early stages, though it's not translating into a gold lead worth talking about, the Gragas is starting to get starved and Dandy's starting to ramp up his vision more aggressively and controlling the jungle and where Amy is. Yeah, well, it's exactly right. And Endless and Marta now having some free time in this bottom lane as well. Marta going to head back and possibly pick up that Sight Stone and, of course, the Sweeper there as well, as Endless does have the pickaxe to the double longsword here available from Sketch. But Sketch sort of forced to go back there just before and didn't really get anything, just got some consumables on top of these double longswords that he's picked up. Looks like it might be the Ghost Blade Sivir to be picked up as Carrie's actually going to get Nard into the wall here on the top side of the map. Misses the Arcane Smash here as well as Long's going to head back into his previous form. Dandy finding his way around Long, looking for the dive as he bounces forward, but oh, Carrie no. turns it around. And man, that was so close, but beautifully played. I believe he was going for an all or nothing play right there, knowing that Dandy was just around the corner. Oh, yeah. Didn't get the bounce or anything to speak of to be able to secure the damage and just enough mana from Carry to be able to turn that around with the smash and stopping any forms of damage, getting the first blood. No assist to the Rek side. It's a mini win within itself, I suppose, but first blood to a Maokai. Yeah, really beautifully done and able to head back to base, pick up that catalyst as the first item here is Carry and even has some boots for himself as well. Hex Drinker looks to be the option from Long, wants to have a little bit more ability to bully that lane out. But of course, Hextrian could just such a fantastically gold effective item here for that top laner. We have a look at the jungle though. Dandy doing the dandy thing here, just continuing to have control of that jungle situation and just farming it up, making sure that he's ahead of Amy. Yeah, and early pink wards, we just saw them clearing as the aggression starts to come out in the mid lane. The fact that they're placing pink wards that aggressively that early is the perfect sign of what's to come. And where he wants to be from here on out in this game. And usually you'd see a pink ward more in a neutral or defensive position to deny them vision. Instead, it's aggressive saying, you're not going to get vision of your own jungle. Every single time that you go to do a buff, take another 10 seconds to walk around and see if we know where you are. Yeah, exactly. And Scatch and Hart actually taking a bit of an excursion towards the red buff here. But Dandy, I believe, was able to take that one down. Dragon, of course, hasn't been a point of contention just yet as a nice boomerang going to get both ticks 
onto Marta after he lands a decent dark finding. Endless, though, able to get some time here with the bottom lane out of turret. He does have a force CS advantage. So, of course, Sketch, massive props to him in able, being able to stay up in farm here. Uh, considering the fact that he's had a rough laning phase. Yeah, he has had a bit of a rough laning phase. Bringing Thresh away for a lot of pressure in other spots of the map has left them in a more of a 1v1 situation where the piercing lights very strong and very able to beat out a Sivir who is not always going to be able to react to a spell shield in time. Yeah. And the pressure that Illusion provides, I don't think there's a big range difference, but you're able to outplay the boomerang. It's much easier to dodge and allows you, as we're just seeing right now, trades going so well in the favor of Vici Gaming. Yeah, Dandy was down here just for a moment. But uh, nothing going to come of that one as Sketch. He's going to have to wander through the puddle here just a little bit. But just going to take away a Scuttle Crab here. And everything's sort of a little bit slow at the early stages. No early dragons going to be taken thus far. Nothing really to speak of here. Just both of the top laners now back into a different dynamic as Long did actually sacrifice the first blood carry now with that catalyst is going to be immovable here on the top side of the map yeah exactly he's got this catalyst now from that first kill he's sitting in a very good position at the moment the nah able to do a lot of damage but not going to be enough now that he's got that sustain and getting a catalyst before level eight i believe he got it at level seven yeah it's going to be near impossible to push him out of lane just from the extra sustain that you get from that and Dandy actually looking to head into this tri-brush in the top lane, but Long doesn't want to have any of it. An unlimited potential going to answer immediately here with this dragon already being started up. And Smite used very early from Amy, actually, as he may have had an extra couple of... Uh, wasn't even a Smite, just looked like it from there, as Dandy is hanging around thinking about going for a steal, but nice explosive cast going to make sure that the Rek'Sai can't get anywhere near it. And first dragon going to go over to unlimited potential. Unless Xiao Yang... Ooh, Dandy actually get, does get the Umbara. Oh. There's a Rift Walk out of the way of the Shockwave. Hatong thought he might be able to catch it in time, but wasn't quite there. Only just getting out of that one. The knock up I thought was long enough to enable the Shockwave. Didn't hit in time. And a smart dragon coming out there. No trade available. Great ultimate from Gragas to knock away Dandy and any chance of a steal. Saving that. And the reason they even started the dragon, there was Ward spotting Dandy in the top lane. And the bot lane had recalled at the same time. Endless and Marta were in base. Instant rotation. Free dragon. Yeah, Scatch and Heart actually. There's the ultimate oh, wow. to be used here from Scatches. Doesn't quite land the box in order to stop Endless from doing anything. And the culling, not going to find too much either. So explosions here in the bottom side, but not really going to find too much from it. I originally thought they were just looking to use the ultimate to get to the turret sooner so they could <laughs> yeah. get all of the last hits. Apparently they wanted to fight, so... Able to do a bit of damage there and push them off the tower completely, but not for long. Yeah, Sketch might be in trouble here as Arden Blaze even going to find him after the spell shield wears off. Vici continuing to push. They really want to be able to take down this outer turret and roam around the map, of course. Pickaxe and the BF sword now available for Endless. And Sketch, he has managed to pick up his BF sword of his own, but is going to be behind as far as getting towards that Trinity, uh, sorry, Infinity Edge is concerned. Chilling Smart under Long here in the top side is forced to use that flash. There's the Twisted Advance, though. Amy does flash into the Body Slam. There's the Explosive wow. Cast carry. Most definitely dead as Dandy does have to tunnel his way out of here. And Amy Body Slamming up to this one. Beautiful Boomerang Long might be able to get him slowed down in time. Nice Chilling Smite allows Dandy to form a little bit more distance. The bounce, the hop, skip, and a jump here from Long really wants to try and continue the pressure. The hyper procs there. Oh, Dandy no. moves out of the way of the boomerang and burrows his way to safety. And man, I was not expecting that one to miss. The, the leap off of his teammate there on the Gragas to get in range to throw the boomerang. Absolutely perfectly played. And unfortunately, the last boomerang being duked there by Dandy. So well done from him to survive. Yeah. What a counter gank that was from Amy coming in there at the right time, right place. Destroying that Maokai who found himself in a very bad position without a twisted advance available. Yeah, a little bit of an overdive here from the Vici Gaming squad. Long able to capitalize on it this time. Ninja Tabi has now been picked up by Carry, probably looking to turn that catalyst into the Righteous Glory eventually. But I believe wants to find either a Spectre's Cow or that Glacial Shroud first up. Dandy actually pressuring Amy out of his jungle now as well. Cinderhulk's being picked up by, for both of these junglers, and Dandy just demanding the respect. Dandy's taken a whole lot of red buffs thus far in the LPL. <laughs> yeah, 
He's taken, I think, majority of the enemy red buffs from the first series up until now, and that one included. Yeah. He'd probably have all of them but one, perhaps. Definitely been a lot of red buff taking. Oh, nice work with the Dark Binding there. Scatch able to take a Dark Passage in order to get himself a little bit safer, but loses half of his health bar as Endless did throw out the ultimate. Hatong and Dandy able to get some free time here with the mid lane out of turret, and that one's definitely going to fall down. Vici Gaming just able to get enough pressure here in these lanes, and they do have a lot of these out of turrets with a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, and the first turret of the game is going to go down to Vici Gaming. The bottom turret is very low. And Maokai is doing quite well in the top lane now after getting that first blade. He's able to harass Long and push him out of lane. Eventually that turret will start to fall if left unattended for too long. And now they're starting to pressure all of their lanes. They're starting to control everywhere. You can see Dandy has this freedom from the start of the game. Just goes wherever he likes and pressures the Gragas out. He was two levels down yeah. when he went for that red buff. Did not care. Wasn't worried about it whatsoever. And you can see Hatong here in the mid lane, massive CS advantage. 40 CS here at 14 minutes is the lead for this Orianna. And we know that Orianna is very much able to stay in control and get the farm up. But the fact that he's been denying Xiao Yang so effectively here in the mid lane is massive news. Oh, yeah. The, it's very natural that these two are being left in their own, their own environments. We've seen Gragas and Rek'Sai put some pressure there, but there hasn't been any real kill pressure. Everyone casually walks away after every gank. And yeah. The fact that they've essentially been left unattended in terms of damage onto each other, to have a lead this big, to have the mid tower down now and be able to control that wave and be ahead by what is around 40 CS is exactly what you need to be doing as that Orianna. You cannot let the Cassidy get a completely free lane and run away with the game. Yeah, and does this mean that it's sort of over here for Xiao Yang? Because, of course, level 10 is the situation. He's been six for quite some time. Dandy going to take away another buff as well. That is, there is nothing that Amy can do around his jungle as far as picking up any extra buffs is concerned. And this is massive here for Vici Gaming because the Rek'Sai just endlessly far ahead of Amy. Yeah, the, the starting to stretch the pressure that they're achieving as the ultimate from Sifa comes out in the mid. Yeah, Xiao Yang looking to try and collapse here onto Hatong. The boomerang actually going to land. Hatong getting very, very low. Whoa. Oh my He's goodness, going. that black shield. Look at the adventure. The heart just goes on. There's the ignite as the command protect is going to try and protect him. Beautiful boomerang. Scatch picks up the kill. And that is Xiao Yang picking one up for himself as well. Beautiful team fight play. And this is heart. This is how good this guy <laughs> is. Takes the, land, takes the adventure on the death sentence. And they're able to transition it into two kills and most likely this turret here as well. And unlimited potential. Staying true to their name. <laughs> a quintessential example of a death sentence right there. Traveling oh, yeah. so far, following him to secure the kill. Unbelievable work. The trade is going to come out on this top turret, but it looks like it's now going to be two mid turrets, and they've got the kills as well. Three to one. Yeah, and Unlimited Potential now able to head over towards this dragon if they want to as well. They might decide to back away. There are some low health bars. But they do definitely want to get some vision there. There's none available, and it looks like Vici Gaming might be able to pick up their first dragon. Yeah, they're going to be able to at least attempt to start this one up. Everyone's going to be recalling from Unlimited Potential, so it should be an uncontested dragon. As we're seeing, no vision available for them. And this will be one-to-one -one in dragons. They're going to get that percentage extra damage on it, our champions, and they're going to be liking that buff. Not going to do a lot for them immediately, but it's no. also taking one of the dragons away from a team that's now taken two of their mid turrets. They already had the first dragon and they're up in kills. So denying any chance of another win condition is a very smart play. Yeah, and I'm looking at both of these teams as well. With the likes of Cassidy and Oriana, you think, you know, going for these late game plays, as Sketch is able to actually secure the Gromp. Dandy not going to be able to take that one away just yet. Explosive cast going to come through. Denying Hatong is blue buff as Amy just says, yes, I have managed <laughs> to secure a blue buff thus far this game. Finally getting a buff of his own. It's going to be so happy. Amy's got that blue buff, and Orianna not having one is the big deal here. Oh, yeah. Doesn't have a whole lot of mana regen. Even though the Athenes is available, you only really get majority of it back with a killer assist. So up against the Kassadin, who is now level 11, doesn't have the blue himself, but you do have mana return with the W extra auto attack mana regen. Oh, yeah. You're going to be okay as the cast, and you're going to be a lot happier than what you would have been if Oriana had a blue buff. Yeah, and Dandy actually looks like he's going towards the Black Cleaver here. We did see this yesterday, but it was the tie in the top lane that decided to do that on the Rek'Sai. Dandy aiming for a little bit more aggressive 
play style available here. It's some skirmishing on the Rex. I will see how it works out here coming from the jungle. There's unlimited potential now just trying to hold on to this bottom side of the map. Endless and Marta pushing up fairly relentlessly. Nice piercing light there from Endless as the Spell Shield is going to block away that Dark Binding. Endless going very aggressively in here as Marta's going to fall down. Hart picks up that kill and Endless now will have to get out of that lane. It's just a little bit of over-aggression there with the Dark Binding on cooldown. The amount of damage that Hart and Scatch are doing between them every single time that a hook hits is phenomenal. They can instantly throw out that boomerang and know it's going to connect. And unfortunately, I guess the spell shield's not timed very well with the hooks and able to hit everything and flay them back into the ultimates. And they're playing this lane so confidently. Every time the Sivir presses ult or Thresh hits a spell, they know they even can before they're in range. Yeah. They just go all in and they just destroy their opponents here of Endless and Marta. Yeah, Amy actually is going to get spotted there by the Tremor Sensors. Dandy is going to try and take down this Gromp. Barrel, not going to find him there as he does secure that one for himself. Twisted Advance onto Long here as he pops the ultimate, but it's just going to be the classic wet noodle fight in the top lane. Not really too much coming. Dandy has a Phage at the moment, which most likely, remember we are on patch 5.8, yeah, will the be black going cleaver. towards that Black Cleaver, unless he decides to go for a Trinity Force. And I'm going to stand corrected if he does. Most likely the Black Cleaver, and that's a very good item for Rek'Sai. Having that extra physical damage with his spells, that extra auto attack damage, Complements him so perfectly, reduces the resistances, and gives a lot of health. Works perfect with Cinder Hulk. Yeah, really does work well with the Cinder Hulk, and does sort of give Rek'Sai the ability to have a bit more skirmishing power when you have sort of foregone the warrior enchantment option. Yeah, definitely. Now you've got that extra ability to trade the resistances of your person that you are fighting against, especially if they're tanks, because it reduces by a percentage amount. They get absolutely shredded. And the fact that most people that you're going to be fighting if it is a skirmish are going to be tanks in a 1v1 situation, whether it be the jungler of Amy or the top laner of the Nah, you're going to be quite... Mo it's more possible for you to win a trade, I should say, in a 1v1. Yeah. And you also, I mean, it's going to reduce their resistances here so that Endless can do a whole lot of extra damage at the same time, sort of double dipping there a little bit as Blue Buff is going to be taken down. does reset itself. Jiao Yang really wants to be able to pick that one up, but it is now back up at full health. And Dandy, <laughs> waiting in the wings, wants to be able to steal away another one. We'll see whether Vici are going to go aggressive here under this one. Unlimited Potential have been able to win a whole lot of the team fights here as Blue Buff's going to reset again. Come on, just get it done. Sort it out. There it is. Unlimited Potential. Lock that one down. They're letting it reset to stop Dandy from getting any closer. And they had the numbers sort of converging around them to prevent it. And up until the point where the pressure was high enough that he couldn't walk in. Reset it so it's health back above smite amounts. Yeah. And then just take it. And they do get the blue buff on a Zhao Yang. He's going to be quite happy. Level 12 Cassidy has the blue buff available. All of his summoner spells up. Rod of Age is finished and working towards what looks to be a Luden's Echo or a Zonia's. Yeah, he's definitely heading that way. I have to think that it probably will be that Zonia's Hourglass just so that he can get in amongst these team fights with a little bit more impunity. Heading into this one, but I have to think that Hatong, he might be going towards that Luden's Echo. We've been seeing it picked up a whole lot more on the Orianna. Yeah, we have seen a lot more Luden's Echo from champions with low spell cooldowns and just good scaling damage. It does so much for them, and you can put that with the Death Cap. Having an extra plus 120 ability power item, it just does wonders for late game carries. Yeah, well, exactly. And Orianna, no slouch there in the late game, so we'll see how this one is going to work out for Hatong, who's continued to have a fantastic CS advantage, but hasn't really transitioned that into any teamfight victories just yet. Of course, the power trough of Orianna, something that's very, very well known. When you've just got that one item in the Athenes, you're not going to be really doing too much, as Endless looks to try and get some damage down with that culling, but doesn't really find it, and UP not able to get that turret down just yet. No, but they are very available and able to do any strong rotations as a team right now. They've got the comp for it. They've got the Sivir Thresh. Gragas can use that ultimate. And they've got a Cassidy who's now a high enough level to be jumping around the battlefield like it's nobody's business. And they've now got the capabilities in them. Nar's going to be split pushing because he still has the teleport available. But now's a good time for them. They've hit a power spike just in terms of knowing that Orianna is in the trough. The capabilities of what she can do yeah. is a lot less. Whereas the Cassidy consistently ramping up from this point on, they're able to do any rotations that they opt into from here on out. And we'll see whether they are going to be successful here. As it does look like unlimited potential looking to start off this dragon will be their second one. Vici Gaming hanging around the area though, and we'll see whether a fight is going to break out here. Carry 
has found his way into this fight. There's the ball right on top of the dragon. Amy might find himself in a slightly uncomfortable position here in the back of the dragon pit. Death sentence doesn't land. And Vici now with position, positional control. Carry right in amongst the fight. Beautiful now on three members. That's a two-man shockwave. Immediately Hart gets eliminated. Dandy trying to escape from the fight, but Amy is going to take him down. Xiao Yang might be his time to fight through this one as that's a double kill for Amy. And Sketch able to sort himself out of kill. Carry over the wall is able to secure that one, but finds himself the last man standing on Vici Gaming. And this unlimited potential squad, their team fighting is beautiful. And that works so well in their favor, baiting the dragon fight, getting them all into a position. Unlimited potential had realized that they can fight. They recognize the fact that they are stronger. They've got that Cassidy ramping up. Oriana Shockwave only hitting two people, and it was the thresh of heart and the tanks of Loon. And Loon hitting an amazing ultimate to start it all off yeah. as well, turning that fight around. Everything just went so well from there. Cassidy getting straight on her tongue, and Dandy. Oh, didn't quite manage to nail the steal here as Dandy's trying to get some damage down onto Amy and Xiao Yang. Of course, very low mana bars, but doesn't secure the dragon, nor does he manage to stop anyone from being able to get out unscathed. And this is a great start to their first game of this series, Unlimited Potential. Being the sister side, everything to prove right now. Oh, yeah. Just promoted themselves up into the LPL, and here they are, 9-3 up, 5k gold ahead of their what was their original main team. Yeah, precisely, and Hatong is able to secure himself a blue buff here, and of course there is sort of there's no slouching here from Beachy Gaming when it comes to late game power. And let's have a look at this fight again. Have a look at the Nah here from Lung. So it's worth noting how far away Dandy and Carry were at the start of that fight. And Lung can just jump straight over them, use that bounce, and hits the fantastic ultimate. Cassidy ramping up using the flash ultimate, getting right next to Oriana and destroying her. And from there on out, Scats just did his job and that was living for a very long time and pressing his ultimate. The rest of the side here able to completely clean up and destroy Carry in a 1v3. And that fight just went perfectly, baiting the Vici Gaming side into them and then turning it around on their heads. Yeah, Death Sentence was down, but of course that didn't really matter. And after Vici sort of forced that fight, there wasn't a whole lot they could do. And I find it a little bit interesting that Vici, who is a team that have been playing against a whole lot of very high-class NAR players for a very long time, would decide to take that fight right when Lung was sort of perfectly able to get the evolution off. Yeah, I believe the Twisted Advance was right, and then they flashed even further back. So he was stuck in an awkward position. And then you're walking into a Thresh Box, which makes it a lot harder for you to disengage. And he NAR actually used them and the bad positioning they unintentionally found themselves in to be right next to the rest of the team of VG Gaming. Yeah, Hatong actually going to get pulled forward by the Death Sentence here. Hart taking a lot of damage, but oh, no. there's a whiff shockwave as Hatong taking some damage from Scatch here. The rest of Unlimited Potential. Nice double body slam into knocking back both of the front line as Unlimited Potential just cleaning this one up. Mata tries to get the Soul Shackles to do something, and Endless kiting away quite nicely, but Vici, Mega they nice are guy. definitely on the back foot. Scatch picks up a double now as well as Carrie's gonna fall. Amy locks that one through 3-0 and 6 for both the jungler and the mid laner of Unlimited Potential, and with three dead, why not take a Baron? And this is them playing their team comp perfectly again. Vici deciding to initiate, catching someone out of position with a hook. Sorry, getting hooked, sorry. They had to try and push back and then it didn't really work out for them. The whiffed Oriana ult was the signal to go though. Oh yeah. The second that that missed, they went straight in. Gragas, body slams, hitting the fantastic ultimate. And now they've got the Baron to back up another one team fight for them. They're in a very good position for the rest of this game. Yeah, very nicely played. We'll see whether they are going to be able to use this one effectively in order to push down some inhibitor turrets, but it's only 27 minutes into this game. It's still quite early days, and Unlimited Potential probably just want to solidify map control and then bleed out the likes of Vici Gaming because there's not a whole lot they can do when they're this far behind. Yeah, you said it. 27 minutes into the game, it is still early, but they also have the Baron this early into the game. So the pressure that they can place on all lanes of the map if they choose or anywhere in particular, which looks to be bottom at the moment, is going to be immense. They can just walk to the lane, have the Baron buff minions, and it's going to be very hard for them to clear because it is so early in the game. The items they have aren't that massive yet at clearing minions. Yeah, they're not really going to be able to get much done. Endless is going to head back, possibly pick up that Phantom Dancer as his second item here, but doesn't even manage to get that recall off because, of course, unlimited potential already here. That ball sitting in the middle of the lake. He's, yeah, it's in the middle of the rocks at the moment. It's a very menacing ball position. Yep. You never Odd one. really see the ball coming, which is actually a very clever strategy if you've seen anyone do that. You put Haven't? it in 
in a terrain area and you can't see the ball at all until it comes out. It's very hard to dodge an ultimate from there. Interesting. I didn't even know you could place it there. Yeah. That's a new one. Thank you very much, Rusty, for a little bit of that uh, the knowledge bomb. Now Vici Gaming looking to try and get something done. They need to... I don't know whether they're going to be able to win a team fight, but it's going to take a massive, massive play from Hatong to land that shockwave exactly where he needs to in order to get this one working out. Because this is what Orianna sort of fall into the trap of. It's being sort of having this ultimate that can be such high impact, but if you don't land it, you're not doing anything. Yeah, they're going to have to rely a lot on the shockwave hitting many targets, but it's going to come down to picking someone, most likely with the Morgana binding, onto a high priority target, such as your Cassidans or your Sivers. Yeah. You're going to need to hit someone very important to be able to win a fight from now, otherwise it's going to be quite difficult. They've got all of the makings of a team that cannot be caught here, unlimited potential. They've got the Sivir with Spell Shield available. It's going to be very hard to get any initiations onto her. You've got Azonia's on the Cassidy and completed now. And unlimited potential are in a very, very good position to be able to continue this lead and push it towards the end of the game. Yeah, and Sketch now with three items and the extra lifesteal from that Vampiric Scepter as well as Endless. Trying to get something done here, but not going to want to chase too far onto that Sivir. But think about the boomerang damage coming through from this build. So much extra armor penetration, extra flat damage from this build coming through from Sketch. And it's going to be very, very hard for Vici Gaming to stop a siege when you've got minions dying left, right, and center from that one ability. Yeah, that's right. It does do a lot of damage, especially given the Ghost Blade Last Whisper build. And the rest of the side here, when it comes to wave clear, they've got so much of it. Gragas, underrated, has a lot of wave clear because all of his spells are AoE, and he's going in here. Yeah, Carry actually going to get explosive cast back. He's going to try and flash his dandy's going to get nod into the wall. Carry still alive somehow as Hatong looking to try and get the ball in position. There's the shockwave onto three members, some high priority targets there, but this, the members of. Unlimited potential just so far ahead as Sketch manages to pick up another kill and he's now rampaging through this fight. That's a triple, a double kill. I'm sorry for the AD carry here of Unlimited Potential and they're going to roll through this one. Dandy, the last man standing. This is an inhibitor most definitely and we'll see whether Unlimited Potential can take more. I guess the best way to describe that was a little bit too little too late. And they are still capable of winning this game. They don't have anything just the inhibitor at the moment. They're going to back off. So that's a big win for Unlimited Potential. But the Shockwave hitting all of the big targets, yeah. just not doing enough damage yet and not at the right time. It was at the end of the fight. You had to bite his time to actually hit the Shockwave on the right targets. And by that stage, Nara had already destroyed Dandy and Carry, and the rest of the team of Unlimited Potential had shredded the rest of his side. Yeah, well, this is the thing. And 4 0 and 6 now for Xiao Yang as well. He has the Athenes on Holy Grail there, so not going to be gated by the mana too much if he can whisk around these fights, picking up some kills. Blade of the Ruined King was just completed outright here from Scatch from oh. a Vampiric Scepter. That's a lot of money that has just gone into an item. <laughs> Rey Mysterio yeah. score right now, looking in a very good position. Oh, yeah. That's some dangerous stuff as Dragon. Number 3. Now going to be the option here for Unlimited Potential if they want to take that one down. Hart doesn't quite spot out that ward, nor does he get that one in the brush, which is a little bit unfortunate. But Vici Gaming, I think they know that they're not going to be able to contest this dragon. No, there's no way for them really to contest the dragon unless they want to sacrifice someone's life for potentially for a steal. It is the third dragon, so they're going to be getting a move speed buff here onto Unlimited Potential if they secure this dragon. And that's going to be a big deal for them, able to work around the map and rotate a little bit faster with that 5%. Yeah, Amy is able to secure that one. So now Unlimited Potential probably going to put a little bit of pressure here in this mid lane as Sketch is hanging around that area. Red buff spinning around him here as well. But now with the Blade of the Ruined King, just a little bit more survivability on top of the Spell Shield. And Sketch, that's his first sort of uh, attack speed item. So really going to be providing a whole lot more damage as Nice little dodge there from Jia Yang as he clears out this pink ward. <laughs> That's so cute. Using the lantern to get out, not even wasting an ultimate stack. Wants to save the mana where possible. And you're right, the first attack speed item besides the Ghost Blade active that the Sivir has yep. picked up. And not necessarily needing the Bloodthirster, not needing to respect any of the outright burst damage that can come out instantly here from Vici Gaming. They're going to get that second tower, and it looks like they want a second inhibitor here. Yeah, it looks like Vici Gaming just bleeding structures at this stage. Second inhib going to fall down as Endless doing his very best to try and clear out this minion wave, but unlimited potential just look unstoppable at this stage. Vici, 
need to try and make something happen, but I just don't know what they can do to try and get themselves in that position. 13,000 gold is now the advantage here for the sister side. And UP have just been, they've played their comp better this game. Are you seeing a lot of Relic Shield stacks on this Thresh, like somewhere around the 20 mark? Yeah, there's a there's a heck of a lot of... Uh, That's a lot of Relic Shields. There is nothing really that VT Gaming... Oh, there's a Flash Death wow. Manages to pick off Carry there, but Command Protect going to try and help out. Scratch, beautiful Spell Shield. Gets rid of the... Uh, the shockwave there, and Xiao Yang able to use that on his hourglass. Destroys Endless here as well as he's tanking up both of the turrets, but takes a dark passage and secures his life there as Dandy just trying to tank up as best he can. Death Sentence says nope, but he is going to make it back to the fountain just now. Third inhibitor going to fall. Unlimited potential. They have super creeps here heading into the base. Carrying Dandy, not a whole lot of damage available. And Hatong, not exactly the tankiest man, but Heart's Thresh has been so good this game. Carry, last ditch effort here into the back line as Dandy does get the knock up. They take down Scatch, but here's the teleport to come in from Long. Members are dying left, right, and center though. Vici still with some fight left in them as Amy, he's diving very, very deep onto this. Marta now back alive again. And Dandy, he's very healthy now. Just tunnels underground, able to use that passive to get his health back. And are Heart and Long, they're finish? still in the base here. As Meganar is going to come in here as well. The crush and bounce combo is going to be used. But <laughs> oh Vici, they're putting so much damage into this Nar, and he's doing so much work. Beautiful triple stun with the wallop. But Twisted Advance is going to keep him into the base. Endless with some <laughs> DPS, but there's another Dark Passage. Man, give Hart the MVP for this one. That's <laughs> some beautiful play thus far. He has been playing exceptionally right now. All of the hooks hitting, and it looks like the mini game is about to begin. Can VG Gaming stop these minions, or is it too little too late? Yeah, this Nexus is definitely going down incredibly low. Endless trying to do what he can as Vici are trying to tank up the minions for themselves. It is so incredibly oh. <laughs> low. I don't know whether they're going to be able to do it here as Dandy. He's hanging around. I just, it's, come on, guys. Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you save the Nexus? I think they have. I think they've managed to kill the Super Creeps heading into their base. As unlimited potential looking to take down the Baron and then put the last nail in this coffin. But Vici, the minigame of sort of tower defense, is actually won this time around. My favorite minigame, Atlas, watching people last ditch efforts. The inhibitor has respawned in the one top One of lane. the inhibitors. Yeah. That is one that is at least a lot less super minions. They're not going to be completely flooded if they can push this out. They might get one more fight chance before they try and close out this game. Yeah, it is going to be a 12,000 gold lead now <laughs> available. 36 minutes into this game and unlimited potential looking to try and finish this one off. Just the Nexus remains after this inhibitor falls down. Carry knows that he has to fight right now. The Righteous Glory not going to be doing too much, but he's found his way on top of Heart. The culling to come through, but Endless already down to half health from nothing here. Xiao Yang just picks up the kill out of nowhere. Hatong, he's going to fall as well. An unlimited potential, couple of auto attacks. And that Nexus falls down. Triple kill in the end there for the Cassidy, and really beautifully played. Unlimited potential. Man, it's not a similar situation from last LPL. This team has came to play. They came to play, and they came fully prepared. The oh, mechanical yeah. skills, the individual player skills from this side here are absolutely phenomenal. They're doing so much work. We've seen the Sivir mechanically, yeah. spell shielding, shockwaves, everything going so well for them. The Nar ults were so perfect. And this side right now, they either know what they're doing, or well, they're just exceptionally good against this VG gaming side. Yeah, it seems like they may have known something that we didn't, but I'm not sure whether that's even the case. Xiao Yang's Kassadin looked fantastic after only showing us one champion yesterday, really proving the fact that you can put him on a whole lot of different champs and he is able to perform. But ladies and gentlemen, we do still have one more game coming up here between these two squads, and we'll see whether Vici once again can bounce back from a defeat. Of course, did it yesterday against OMG, and we'll see after this.